Our next guest has a resume that is truly inspirational. He started out as a Navy SEAL and then graduated from Harvard with a medical degree and now is pursuing his dream of becoming the first Korean American NASA astronaut to blast off into space. He just finished his initial training. He's now eligible to be assigned missions to the International Space Station, the moon, or even Mars eventually. We are so excited to have Southern California native, Santa Monica High School alum, Johnny Kim, joining us via Skype from uh, NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Uh, uh, Dr. Kim, it is great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm sorry, but I, I just have to give proper credit where it's due. Um, Mark Polanski was actually uh, the first NASA astronaut of Korean descent that uh, retired not too long ago, so I just want to make sure. You get a proper shout out. You bet. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, you know, it is amazing. You have lived these incredible uh, careers. You have achieved so much at, at <laughs> such a, a young age, and we were so struck when we when we first heard about you. Uh, I was particularly excited because my father, my late father, was a career hospital corpsman, and I know that's how you uh, entered the U.S. Navy. What what inspired you to enlist in the Navy right out of high school? Oh wow. Um, a lot of reasons uh, I could go on, but I think the short answer is that I was really looking to serve, to put my service to something above myself. And when I heard the creed of what it's like to be a SEAL, to work professionally behind the lines, do the hard things that no one else wanted to do or could do, and never seek recognition for their actions or advertise that work, that creed just really st stuck out to me. And of course, after 9-11, that galvanized me further. And uh, for a lot of reasons, I just wanted to, to, to uh, belong to a group like that. So that's an amazing feat in and of itself. So not only did you do that, but then you decided you wanted to become a doctor. Yeah, you know, I, I have not planned any of these steps here. I think the only thing that's been consistent with my goals has been following my heart and seeing where those passions lead me. Yeah. And I couldn't have constructed this path for myself um, if I had thought of it. And back when I was a kid, I never even thought about being a doctor or being an astronaut. All I really wanted to do was be a SEAL. And those wartime experiences working overseas and working with some of the best men and women of our country really inspired me to take that service further and to try and make this world a better place. And so you're a year into your residency at Mass General in, in Boston, and you think, I, 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 I'm going to try to become an astronaut, <laughs> and and how does that happen? How do how do they notify you? And when they told you, can you can you tell me what what that felt like? Yeah, absolutely. So the applications were actually came out when I was still in medical school, okay. and of course I didn't think I had a shot in the world of, of making it. But when I when I heard about it, it was consistent with my goals of trying to make this place a little bit better. You know, I, I don't think there's a better platform out there than space exploration to inspire the next generation and to really bring a lot of the benefits of space exploration like like Apollo did for us back in the 60s and 70s. So I wanted to be a part of that. And, you know, I submitted my application and when I discovered it, it was, um, it was surreal and it still is surreal today. And I feel that it's, I recognize the privilege it is to be in these shoes and that there's so many other qualified people to do this job. So it really motivates myself and a lot of my classmates to just earn, earn our privilege every day. I'm already flabbergasted at all of this, and it's not done. There's still more. <laughs> okay, so you just completed two years of training. Tell us more about that training. Now, we've heard that you learned how to conduct spacewalks, use space station systems, fly a T-38 jet plane. Oh, yeah, and speak Russian. And now you're just showing <laughs> off, Dr. Kim. Come on. How did all this happen? Um, you know, it was amazing. It's an amazing job. We get to do something different every day, and we work with a lot of unique people every single day. You know, one day uh, it might be working at the gym because physical strength and, and fitness is really important for our job. It's going to be speaking Russian, or it's going to be learning the engineering systems of the International Space Station. Um, coming up for the, on the pipe for me, um, I'm going to be doing a little bit more some a little bit more flying in the T6 and learning how to support ongoing missions in the space station as a capsule communicator at Mission Control. And, and there are so many ways in which you can use your astronaut training now. And one of the things we threw out there was the possibility of, of maybe going to Mars someday. Um, that, that's a multi-year trip. It, you know, the, the physical demands and, and what it does to the human body, as you know, uh, that hasn't been tested. 
Is that something that you would be willing to do? It would be an incredible sacrifice for you and your family. You know, it, it absolutely would be a sacrifice. Um, but I know that myself and a lot of the other astronauts in our core um, would make that sacrifice. Um, you know, if you look at throughout human history, a lot of great things have required great sacrifices. And I certainly know this firsthand working overseas with a lot of outstanding men and women who gave everything, gave their lives in support of what they believed in. Um, so absolutely, it would, it would be, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't waste a second to make I, that. So. I have to ask you about your family here because you're an L.A. guy. Um, tell me how, your, you know, your parents, your siblings, what, what are they, they must be just amazed at what you're doing. You know, um, they are. They're very supportive and, and amazed. I, I have a great support network at home, and um, my mother and my brother have been my biggest supporters. So, yeah. As so and cool. as a as a kid who struggled with self confidence and being shy, uh, you're not that anymore. Do you, do you have a <laughs> message for those young people who might be feeling they're in the same spot? You know, <clears throat> that's one of. The things I'm most passionate about is being able to inspire those young kids, especially folks who don't think that they have the most confidence. And I'd like to just tell them that, you know, sometimes times are, are tough. Uh, an adage that I would always often say to myself is, this too shall pass. And it kind of reminded me of just the temporary condition of, of life, of the human condition. And times get tough, but if we have the right attitude, we push hard and we always get back when we fall, we can learn a lot and we can grow stronger from our experiences. Wow. wow. You've taught us a lot in the last three minutes. I'll tell Love you that yeah. much. Thank Dr. You. Kim, thank you so much. We wish you all the best, and we hope you'll come by for a visit uh, next time you're home in Southern California. Thank you, sir. I'd love to. Thank you for having me. All right. To keep up with Johnny Kim's journey, you can follow him on social media at uh, Johnny Y. Kim. It's right there on your screen. And again, our thanks to him for joining us this morning. I'm following him right this second. <laughs> it's not going to be the last right of, this uh, second. Yeah, we hear yeah. of him. No. That's for sure. I can't yeah. wait to watch every yeah. step. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah.